welcome to the Royal Voluntary Service Virtual Village Hall. My name is Sue Salter and today I'm going to be doing a festive table decoration. Here's a little one that I did make a little bit earlier just to show you, to give an example. Really, really simple but really, really pretty and would brighten up any table at this time of the year. So let's have a look at the materials that I used to make this simple decoration. First of all, of course, you need a container, a pot. And here is a plant pot that you can get from any garden centre um, or hardware store. Or, of course, you can always buy these things online. Or, if you've just got in your cupboard um, a pot that you've used up and washed out, then you could just cover it with some lovely Christmas paper and a bow, a ribbon. And of course, that is absolutely perfect. You don't need to go out and buy extra things if you've got these things already. But today I'm using a galvanised pot, which is quite a bit bigger than my little example here. But this is a pot that I've had for a very long time and I use it every year and it's just a nice size for my table. So I'm going to put into my container um, some Oasis. This is just a block of Oasis. Again, you can buy these things online. So I'm going to up and unwrap that. And what I find is helpful is to always line your pot with just something to protect it. So I've just got a bag here. It could be a sandwich bag, could be a carrier bag. I'm just going to line it and put the Oasis in. And it means that when you put the water in, it just protects the container. I'm just gonna squash that in and tuck in the bag around it. Just squash it down like that. What you might have to do with your, if you choose a little pot, is to actually just use a, a knife just to slice down and shape the oasis to fit into the pot. It's really, really easy to cut and actually very satisfying. So once I've got my oasis in, and then I'm going to use some water just to dampen the oasis. And it's amazing just how much water it takes. So you might find that it's easier to soak it in a, in a sink first or in a, a washing up bowl or a bucket and then top it up once it's in the, in the container. So I've got a whole pan here and you can see that it's really soaking in there. I'm kind of rushing this because I'm demonstrating, but you can take your time and actually soaking it is a really good idea. But when I put my greenery in in a minute, I don't want it to go into, be, uh, into being a dry oasis block. So I'm just putting lots of water, get right to the one end and to the other. Isn't that amazing? It takes all of that pan. And I've got a jug as well. I'm just going to top it up with a jug. And once you've actually finished the decoration, it's really important just to keep the water topped up every couple of days to make sure that you keep the greenery really healthy. Okay, so that's my container. It's now quite heavy because it's full of water, which is great. So I really love a candle at this time of the year and I could go for just a quite a big candle and put my bits around the outside. I could go for a small candle, probably a little bit small for the container, perfect for that size. Or I could go for three candles. It's always good to go for odd numbers in flower uh, in floristry in any sort of decoration like this odd numbers is really important so i could go for the three i've got three candles here that i actually decorated this year that i painted myself i guess that's a whole new workshop isn't it and these are a little bit taller and the white looks really looks really pretty doesn't it and these are just plain dinner candles that i painted i'm actually going to go for the large i quite like that sort of um, quite sturdy look. So I'm just going to cut a little bit 
if I just put my candle into the middle and just gently press around in a circle, you can see I've made an indent. I'm just going to cut a little bit of the oasis out. So really easy to cut. Ever, sli ever so slightly harder to cut when it's wet actually. So I'm just going to scoop a little bit of that out just so that I've got an area for the candle to sit when it's when it's put on the oasis. You can see I'm just making a little, just quite a shallow hole. Okay, I think that'll be fine once I just press it down. That's great. So I'm just going to press that in and it just feels a little bit more steady. Okay, so let's go on to our greenery and our lovely dried fruits and berries and flowers and twigs. I've got a variety here, I'm not going to use it all. Um, but what I do like is having two or three different greens. So I've got ivy here, which at this time of the year, I just love the berries. And of course, when the berries fall off, you're left with the seed heads, which is, they look like little crowns to me. And I just think they're absolutely beautiful. And I've got some just plain ivy leaves as well. So that's our ivy. And then this is just an evergreen yew, which I've got a big bush off in, in my garden actually, but you can find it in hedgerows. It's really, at this time of the year, it's, it's very, very easily available. And then my favourite favourite at this time of the year, nearly as favourite as my ivy, but I love eucalyptus, which of course you can buy, but again, I'm lucky to have a bush in my garden. I love the smell of it. it smells absolutely amazing. So I've got three different greenery here. And then I've got some other decorations as well. Um, I've got some dried apple, some dried orange slices. And again, you can buy these online. I've got some berries. Now these are actually artificial berries, but hedgerows these year, th at this time of the year are full of berries. You could cut some berries from the, from the hedges. I've got some pine cones. I've got some cinnamon that I've just put some wire around and put a little bit of a, a ribbon bow around. They look pretty, don't they? Really lovely. And then over here, I've just got some twigs, really, some dried twigs. There's lots of pruning going on at this time of the year, so lovely twigs. And then another one of my favourite flowers is hydrangea. And of course, these hydrangea heads dry beautifully. So this is a miniature hydrangea, which is a really lovely size for my table decoration. You can, of course, get the really big hydrangea heads that are gorgeous in a big vase in the summer. But this is a, a, a small one, which is perfect for my table decoration. And then, so this is some orange that I've got wired. I've got little Robin here, which I just got from a supermarket actually, but he's got a little clip there, so you could clip him onto your decoration. And of course, ribbon, love ribbon. I'm a bit of a ribbon hoarder, so I've always got a stash of ribbon. Okay, so where do we start? We start with the greenery first of all. So I'm going to make sure, and this is really important, that my greenery is facing away from the candle. If I put my greenery up, then of course we're gonna risk um, setting fire to the greenery. So always angle your greenery away from your candle. Really important. Unless of course, you're not planning to light it. Okay, so I'm gonna start and put my greenery around the edges, facing right away from the candle. Taking off the edges, on, sorry, off the ends, so that you've got a, a quite a pointy bit to put into your oasis. So, of course, I'm doing this really quite quickly, but you can take your time. And it's amazing how much it takes, actually, to cover the the edge of the pot. It takes quite a lot of greenery. I often find that I cut some greenery and then end up going back to the garden to cut some more. 
So I'm just making an edge really all the way round. It'd be nice to have some Christmas music on, wouldn't it? <laughs> Festive carols or something. Something very satisfying when you make something yourself. Creativity is so good for us, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just working my way around. I can still see a little bit of carrier bag, so I'm just going to cover that. Although there's lots more to go in, so. Okay, so you can see it's sort of making a bit of a um, an edge there with my evergreen. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. We can just put more and more in, but let's see if we need a bit more at the end. Okay, so that's one of my greens, okay? And then I'm going to go on to another of my greens now. So I'm gonna use my, one of my favorites actually is the um, the ivy, which I just love. And these seed heads, they just look gorgeous, don't they? So I'm just gonna put a few of those in. Because my decoration is quite big, I'm not really worried about counting the numbers of things, but in the smaller decoration here, I used odd numbers of the greenery. So with a little ivy, I think I did five pieces of ivy that went round. And the yew, I just, I mean, it's carried on going around to make the edge, but um, so the smaller the decoration, the more you have to be aware of those numbers, but. Okay, get some nice leaves in there. Wonderful. So you can see it's starting to fill up a little bit now. Still making sure, of course, my things are pointing away from the candle if I want to light it, which of course I do. Love candles. Okay, so that, oops, I think is starting to look a bit more full. So I'm just going to now have a look at my, this lovely eucalyptus, which of course is such a different leaf. It's quite silvery. So it brings a really different color into the decoration. Again, trying to face it a little bit further away from the decoration. I always have a pair of old scissors as well that I use for floristry. And of course, garden clippers. It's just so satisfying, isn't it? And it was starting to look so beautiful. I'm going to cut that down a little bit more actually. of the eucalyptus. It smells amazing. Okay, so I've got my three different greens there. So now I'm thinking about what I can put around the middle here. I could go with the pine cones. These are really pretty. I could go with berries. It does need some colour. Or I could wire some of the oranges and apples. This little decoration here, I wired the apples together into the oasis. But actually, I just love these hydrangeas. So I'm actually going to put, I'm gonna put five, I think. Let's just see how we go. One, oops. Two. Such a lovely color. I realise that I'm such a traditionalist at Christmas with my colours. Some people go for the pinks and the purples or turquoise or... I just love red and green, gold. So one, two, three, four, just leaves me room for one more. Five. 
way. So that really fills that area beautifully, doesn't it? But there are still some gaps. So I think I'm going to go for the red berries because they're just so pretty and they bring that lovely um, burst of colour. Just cut them down a little bit. As I say, you could go for the natural from the bushes at this time of the year. There's plenty around. But I just had these in, so I'm going to use them up. It's always good to see what you've already got in the in the cupboards, isn't it? When it comes to the pots, the berries, the ribbon. That's looking really pretty now, isn't it? Turn it round so you can see all the way round. Okay, so I think I will go with these oranges as well. You can actually make your own orange slices just by, of course, slicing your oranges really thin and then just putting them on, on trays in the oven and then just leaving them for hours and hours and hours. And the smell is amazing. So I've got some floristry wire here I'm using as well. And I always buy the 24 gauge, which is on a reel. Um, but you can get other wires, of course. This is a really nice one because it's covered in green paper. So it's quite good for disguising. But I'm actually using the 24 gauge today. So I'm just putting literally the wire through the oranges and then bending the wire over and just giving the wire a good turn, twist, all the way to the bottom so that you end up with a point to put into the oasis. You can just open them up slightly. They look beautiful, don't they? Brings a really nice colour, doesn't it, as well? So I'm doing exactly the same thing again, just twisting the wire over and over and over and over until you get a point, and then just putting that into the oasis, and just opening the oranges slightly. I think I'll just go for three actually, back to my odd numbers. So again, pushing the wire through, bending it over, twisting it around over and over and over and over and over. Really important to end up with a point at the end. So I think that's looking really quite nice and full now, isn't it? So pretty. And it smells so lovely with the, the eucalyptus and the oranges. It's really lovely. Another option, if you wanted another option, would be to put the, the cinnamon bunches in. That could be another option. It would look really pretty actually, but I don't want it to be too full of different, different things. Another option could be to bring a bit of texture, is to put some of these twigs in. I think I will. I think I will, just a few. Obviously the twigs need to be much further away from the candle because they are what will ignite. But it brings just such a lovely texture, doesn't it? I'm so nearly there now. It brings a texture and it brings a height, which is really nice. Let's go for one more over here. Actually, one more. You could keep going and going. It's knowing when to stop, isn't it? Beautiful. I love the texture of the twigs. That's amazing. So, I think that's just about it. Um, something else you could do, if you wanted to, would be to wire a little bow and put that into the decoration. I actually think I'm going to put it on this one here because I didn't do this earlier. So I'll just put my little bow in there. Let's turn that around so you can see. And that just brings a real beautiful finish, doesn't it, to the decoration. So I really hope that you have a go at this. I think it's a really stunning thing to make. And it looks so expensive, doesn't it? But most of this is from my garden. So do have a go and do send me any 
of the pictures of the things that you've made because it's always so encouraging to see those that have carried on with the workshops and, and given it a go. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you next time.